Now let's look at the bandwidth. Let's look at the bandwidth of narrowband FM and PM signals. The bandwidth of angle modulated signals. Specifically, we'd like to go over the introduction comparing, we'll start with comparing FM with AM. We'll look at the narrowband FM and PM, and then we'll look at the construction of narrowband frequency and phase modulators. How to construct the modulator. So our focus is on narrowband FM. Now, depending on the bandwidth of the signal, the FM signal, or of course PM, it can be classified into narrowband or wideband FM. We have two types of angle modulated signals, narrowband or wideband. The general form for the FM or PM signal will given by the following two equations. In the left hand side, we have the general form for the FM signal. In the right hand side, we have the general form for the phase modulated signal. Remember that here, the phase is directly proportional to the message. This is why you call it phase modulated signal. Here, the phase is related to the integral of the message, A of T, which means that the frequency is going to relate to the derivative, which is the message itself. So if we have the integration of the message here, it means that the instantaneous frequency will depend on the message itself. So this is the general form, whether it's being FM narrowband or wideband. Now, we call it a narrowband signal if it satisfies the following condition. If this term, if this deviation, if this term that controls the bandwidth is relatively small. So if the amplitude of KF times A of T is very small compared to one, or if KB times M of T is very small to compared to one, we call this signal narrowband. Because if these are small, the change on the message does not result in a lot of change in the instantaneous frequency. If these are small, then the change in frequency will be limited, and we call them narrowband. We'll see more ways of defining what a narrowband signal is. But for now, these are the two conditions. Now, what is the bandwidth of a narrowband FM signal? If the condition is true, what will be the bandwidth of FMPM? signal. Okay, now I will take the FM in general as an example, but you can now, you can generalize to PM. So we'll do a little bit of math manipulation to see how can we represent the signal in a way that we can tell what the bandwidth is. Currently, this is the form of the FM signal. Okay, we can come up with another exponential form. So this is G of FM, G sub FM, this is a function FM. I'm going to come up with a complex signal, complex exponential signal. The amplitude is here, and then the angle is in the exponent. Okay, remember that in the exponential form, we can we can write in two ways. Because when you multiply two exponents, the result will be the sum of the exponents. Okay, now remember that our objective, our target is to rewrite this in a way that we can tell what the bandwidth is. Currently, I'm just using a little bit of math to rewrite things in a different way. So remember that we can always go back from the exponential to the to the real part by taking uh, the real part of the complex function because the complex function, the exponential term, can be written as a cosine the angle plus j sine the angle. So we can go from one way to another. You can always get back to your true signal by taking the real part. So we will, we're going to play with the complex exponential form, but we know that only the real part is that uh, going to be retained for the FM signal. Now, I will take this term of the exponential. I'm going to use the series expansion. I got this from the math. You can find this in a math textbook or website. You can find that the exponential or raised to power x can be written as 1 plus x plus x squared over 2i and so on. So this is for all values of x. You can keep going in all terms. So I will take this red part of the signal. Math says you can write it as exponential sum. So this term remains the same. The red part of the signal is expanded using the series 1 plus the exponent. Okay plus the exponent squared, okay, and then we continue in the same way. 
Now I'll take it uh, from that point. So we recover the same expression. Now you can see that easily that j squared, the complex square j squared is going to be minus sign here. Okay, and then we have j raised power 4 again is going to be minus. So the sign is going to alternate between positive and negative. I also what I did also I got this expression inside. So I got e to the j omega c inside t. So to go from here to here, we just two, did two things. We got the exponent inside, and we also converted j squared j to raised to power even power into a minus sign. Okay, and all the odd powers here we have, for example, um, j remains the same. J squared is minus one. J cube is going to be minus j because j squared is minus. And then we have what remains is j. So basically, you have either plus or minus, and then we have j's. The sign is uh, you have plus plus minus minus plus plus, and then it continues like this. So now, what what did we do? What did we gain by doing this? Now, under the condition, if you want to take only the real part, this is the complex exponential expansion. Now, I want to go back to my um, I want to go back to the real part. This is j hat function I want just j so what does it say you need to take the real part what's the real part of this term it's cosine the angle okay what's the real part of this because there is a j now it will be a minus sign remember the exponential is cosine plus j times sine so now the cosine term will be complex and the sine term will be positive with a minus sign so to go from here to here we do one thing, if you want to get the function, if you want to get the real part, you notice know, whenever we have real, I mean, there is no j, I'll get the cosine. Whenever there is multiplied by j, I get a minus sign of the exponent. Okay. So this is how we go from here to here. A cosine, we have sine and minus sine terms, and we have this expression. Now, we'll take this is the, this is the conclusion that we got to. We'll take this one step further. Now, so far, we were able to write the signal, the FM signal, in the following format. So far, we have not done any narrow band approximation. So the question, what is the bandwidth of the signal? What's the bandwidth of FM? If you take it in general, this is the carrier term, at the center frequency of the carrier. Here is the integration of the message. Remember that the integration of the message has the same bandwidth as the original signal. But when you multiply by the carrier, it becomes double side band. So this term has a bandwidth of 2b. Now, there is the square of, of a. Again, squaring the signal results in doubling the bandwidth. So the bandwidth here, so if you allow me just write the expressions here, this has a term of bandwidth of 2b. Now, this is going to be, this term is a squared, so it's going to be 2b, multiplied by cosine, double side. So shifting the signal to double side band, it becomes 4b, and then we have 6b. And then the bandwidth uh, start to increase 8b uh, and so on. So in principle, the bandwidth is infinity. The bandwidth of FM and PM signal is infinity. But what makes it practically not infinity is that this amplitude, these factors, those coefficients, uh, they are all going to decay. So these are going to be small values, which can be ignored as we go on. Under the assumption of narrow band, if we assume narrow band, then we are basically saying, we are saying basically the following. We are saying that uh, this scaling, k times a of t, is much less than 1. So if it's much less than 1, and then you square it, it becomes even much less. And then you cube, cube a number which is less than 1, if squared and cube and so on, it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So we can approximate this expression. Now, to go from here to here, we invoke the narrow band assumption. Before, everything was valid for any FM signal. This expression, which is basically, we just dropped all these terms, assuming they are small. Now, somebody will say, why would, don't we drop this term? If you drop this term, the approximation, then we kill the signal. There is no message shown. We want to approximate to a degree that we still retain the function, or the message, or the signal. So, you can approximate to here, to here, but... Uh, this is the assumption that we invoked. And now we're saying if it's narrow band, then the signal can be written in the following expression. And without repeating this analysis, you can expect that if you start with 
the phase modulated case, you'll find out uh, that you get the similar assumption here, similar analysis, but you'll find out that instead of Kf times A of T, you get Kp times O of T. Now, we have done all of this to understand what's the bandwidth of a narrow band signal. Now, let's try here. What's the bandwidth of this term? It's the carrier term. What's the bandwidth of this term? Again, now this is 2B, right? So a narrow band FM signal will have a bandwidth equal to 2B, which is stated here. Narrow band FM, the minimum we can get is twice the bandwidth of the message. So two times the bandwidth of the message. It's like the double side band suppressed carrier. We cannot go below AM. Okay, if you go below AM, if you drop this term, then you lose your message. Similarly, for the case of FM, we can see here that we have a carrier term and we have uh, a double side band suppressed carrier term. So the conclusion of this slide, first, I want you all to be able to memorize these two expressions. Remember these two expressions, because these are the general form for narrow band FM and PM. It's A, it's like double side band, except we are modulating with minus sign instead of modulating with cosine, and there is a constant. For the case of FM, we are modulating a minus sign, but we are modulating with the integration of the message. A of T is the integral of the message. In the next slide, we will try to implement a narrow band generator. So very important, so we need to remember these two equations from this slide to be able to implement the generator. Now, the slide title says construction of narrow band frequency and phase modulators. Okay, now starting from the left, we want to start with the message as the input. We want to build a diagram that generates the narrow band FM. It will be very similar here, except that the only difference here is that we have KB instead of KF, and we have M of T instead of A of T. So let's try here. On the left hand side, I start with the message. Okay, so this is the term. Then the message gets integrated to get A of T. So we are here. Then we need to multiply by sine. So we start with the carrier, shift the carrier by minus by over 2, we get a sign. So we do the multiplication. Now we are up to this term. To scale by k, a constant factor, factor, we use an amplifier with gain kf. So we have in the upper branch, we have made up to here. In the lower branch, I will take the cosine term, just a cosine without any multiplication. Okay, and then I have a minus here to account for this minus sign. Sum them up. And then A is outside the bracket, so we have an amplifier gain A outside. So without, you should be able to write the formula, and then from the formula, you should be able to build the following diagram. As you can see, the only difference in the narrow band FM generator, okay, we don't need this integration. I made this already in, in red. So what else? What else is that the constant here will be different. We call it KP. Okay? So in this um, part of the lecture, we have learned how to rewrite the general form of FM signal into an expansion form. The objective of the expansion is to find the bandwidth of FM. We came up with two expressions for narrow band FM, and narrow band FM and narrow band PM. You should be able to write this expression by heart. And also we have shown how to reconstruct the two building blocks. These are called narrow band angle or modulators, or FM and PM generators. So in the coming slides, we'll be using these narrowband generators. We'll do small tricks to build a wide band generator, but we always start with narrowband uh, modulators. Narrowband FM is used in telephone exchange tandems. FM broadcast surface use wideband. The FM radio that's popular is not using narrowband, but we start with narrowband and then make it wideband as we're going to see in the next lectures. So please be with us.